So the Corinthians were very cornerly minded. Um, Paul had to address them about fornication in the church and um, now and also about um, letting people, letting false apostles come into their church and preach to them and it and other things okay and so this is a perfect example of a christian can be cornerly minded yes a christian can be cornerly minded and work in its flesh and um paul loved them i mean he prayed with tears for them he loved them he loved all his churches he loved all all of the people who he ministered to um but i wanted to hit a uh, hit on because I, I know i hit on in the first letter of corinthians the first book of corinthians about the fortification not to allow it and not to go around it not to be around it you know and i did i remember doing a video on that but this is a very very also a very serious um video that needs to be addressed because it is still happening <laughs> it is still happening to this day and so um there's a lot of false quote unquote apostles there's a lot of false men being crept in unawares coming out of nowhere just creeping on in the churches and disguising themselves as ministers of righteousness and we're going to see how paul dealt with this because paul went through a lot paul went through a lot of trials and tribulations and persecutions and torture. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. He was thrown in prison. You know, he was such and such and et cetera, et cetera. All for the gospel. All because of the name of Jesus. And um, so he's, you're going to see how he uh, he's very stern. He's very direct. When it comes to the gospel, he will fight for his Lord. And that's what we need to be doing for the gospel. And that is what today's video is about. Stand on the gospel and God's word. Do not sway from it. Uh, the gospel is that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and was rose again on the third day. He is alive. His words are alive. We are sinners. We can't save ourselves. You can't save yourself. you got to come to him in a sincere heart change it's not i believe in god i believed in god all my life but i wasn't saved okay um it's a heart change okay you have to understand that you are a sinner and cannot save yourself you got to understand that you did sin against your lord and savior all these years and it's a trusting in Jesus Christ and believing on him. Okay. So you're going to see how Paul was very, he stood up for the gospel. He stood up for the gospel. It didn't matter what people said about him. Uh, uh, if people called them false Christian or, or it, he didn't care if someone called Paul a false Christian. He didn't care if people talked behind their back, behind his back. He didn't care if they walked out on his life. He didn't care <laughs> because he even said um, it, uh, f to be in Christ is gain. Uh, to die is gain in Christ Jesus. Because remember, when we come to Jesus, we die with Jesus. And we, and we were raised with him. Okay. We're born again. Okay, we're born again creatures in Christ Jesus. So the victory is already won. It is finished. You are saved. You can't lose your salvation. So he stood on that promise. He stood on that security and he stood and did not waver and did not move 
Okay, and so that is the foundation. If you don't have that kind of foundation as a Christian, you're always just going to wonder and worry and be tossed to and fro from every doctrine, from every wind of doctrine. And I've, I've learned that the hard way because I was one of them, guys. I didn't know what was what when I, when I first became born again. Um, thankfully, I feel better. <laughs> Hallelujah. But um, this is a very serious thing that we need to touch on. Okay, so in this chapter, he's basically talking about how, um, okay, Corinthians, you let these people creep creep in and try to teach you falsely. They are, um, they probably was um, very, they could talk great. They were, they were, fascinating they were they probably had money and all these different things and you know and he's gonna talk about how Paul actually is gonna say I'm gonna be a fool I'm gonna I'm gonna talk as a fool because he's he's basically gonna say you know what I may not be like that I'm not cunning I'm not I'm 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 not a great talker like that but I'm not a false apostle. I'm not a false Christ. And I, you know, he said that I take it to the Lord. Um, but anyway, he says, verse two, for I am jealous over you. See, because he loved him so much. He said, for I am jealous. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So he was like a father to them. He was a father to the, to the Corinthian church. You know, he taught them, he loved them, he uplifted them, he edified them. He, you know, um, he helped them. Verse three, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the, what? From the simplicity that is in Christ. See, Christ, so first three, he's talking, he's going back to Genesis. He's going back to the Genesis, okay? And he's talking about these people are being moved away from the simplicity in Christ. You know, the people who say, oh, it's not enough just about believing in your heart. You have to do other things. There's other things that you have to do to be saved. Well, then they done crossed over to a new doctrine and a, and, and, and a new spirit. And that spirit, a new doctrine is not of Jesus Christ. Okay. So basically he's like, your minds should, so that your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity. Only the devil will do that. Only the devil can do that. Move someone away from the simplicity in Christ. Okay. Verse four, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. What? Like, okay. So Paul was saying back in his day that that was going on. It's still going on now. People say, oh, well, you know, it's not enough just about believing in your heart. You have, there's some other thing that you have to do. You have to maintain your salvation now. You have to maintain it by works. And we're going to we're going to talk about that in a minute. You got to maintain it by works. So then it becomes a works salvation. Okay? Or water baptism, you have to be water baptized, or you have to tithe, or you have to pray a certain prayer and you have to repent to a priest and you have to burn a candle or um uh you know, you have to pray to the to Mother Mary. She will be the one to take your prayers to the Lord. Idolatry. Idolatry. A false Christ. A false gospel. Okay. You can't once when, when you become when you are born again from the sim from the simplicity of Christ Jesus that He died for you. You are nothing but a wretched sinner. You can't save yourself. Okay, you need a savior that you believe on his death, burial, and resurrection. And you said, I believe in you, Father. I trust this 
from your heart. You are saved from a sincere heart. You are saved, sealed to the day of redemption. Okay. Nobody can snatch you out of the father's hands, not even yourself. That includes you. Okay. So yeah, people, Christians can backslide and we all have been backsliders. Okay. So for somebody to say, um, you have to maintain now, you have to maintain your salvation. Well, they're turning it on them. They're, they're looking at them now. It's me. That becomes pride. It's me. I have to maintain my salvation. I have to keep it going. If I don't do it, I will lose it. Oh, well, you turned the gospel to you. So that means you think that you died for all sinners. So then therefore you're trusting in your own self. So then it becomes an accursed gospel, you see. Okay. Five. For I suppose I I was <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I think uh four. For if he that cometh preacheth another G okay, I already read that. I already read that. For I suppose I was not a wilt behind uh behind the very cheapest apostles. Okay. Because he was. Okay, but they uh, 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 let another, uh, let some other apostles, uh, false apostles crep in their church, okay, and preach another gospel. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. So he was, he was being very direct because he was, he, he was because Paul felt this um, righteous. Uh, indignation in him because he loved him so much. He didn't want that to happen. So verse seven, have, have I committed uh, an offense in abasing myself that you might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely. So now he's talking about the money. Okay. Because now they were, um, they were trying to Say, oh, well, he's going to take money from you. So he's in a false apostle. They're trying to tell, they're trying to say Paul was a false apostle because he's taking money. So now Paul's like, I'm not taking no money. I'm not taking no money. And guess what? They still blamed him for not taking money because, <laughs> because um, they said, oh, well, he's not taking money because he's trying to prove that he's not a false apostle, a false apostle. Okay. It, it, either way, he didn't, it, they didn't see it. Either way, he was a false, a false apostle in their eyes. I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. Okay. And when I was present, see, he helped the church. And when I was present with you, but they blamed him and wanted, I was chargeable to no man for that, which was lacking to me, the brethren, which came from, uh, Macedonia supplied. Okay. They supplied. I guess that was in another church. I think it was in the the Thessalonian uh, Thessalon Thessalonians church. I think I have to go back and see what the church. But anyway, in all things, and I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. Okay, so as the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not. God knoweth. He's being sarcastic. He's like, I'm both, listen, I'm helping you, God. Like, I love you. Wherefore, because I love you not. Like, he's being sarcastic. And he says, God knoweth. Period. Point blank, period. God knoweth his heart, you know. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from when, from them, which desire occasion that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we for such, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel. Okay. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's deep guys. That's deep. That should be very alarming. To many people in the Christian community, the born again Christian community. Therefore, it is no great thing if this, if, uh, I'm sorry, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. 
okay? Their works. <laughs> Let me back it up. We are saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, lest any, lest any man should boast. But then it goes on to say that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, made to do good works after we're saved. So we are made to do good works. But right here, I bet you these people were saying, this is, this is how you're going to have to maintain your salvation by works. It is by works that we are saved and such and such and such. That's a, let me tell you something. That is a cancer. There, that's a cancer going on right now. Um, you have to overcome. You have to work for your salvation. No, it does not say that. It says you have to work it out. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Absolutely. Every day. But it does not say to work for. It does not say you can lose your salvation if you don't work for it. Um, it, it. It has already been finished once you come to Christ in faith. I wish these people would understand this. It's not about Ann. It's not about Betty. It's not about Joe. It's not about anybody in this world. Only but only through it's only by Jesus Christ. And it really it today, I don't know why, but I just woke up and I'm like, it's not about works that you can maintain your salvation in order, and that's gonna determine if you're gonna go to heaven or hell. When you come to Christ Jesus by faith and in a sincere heart, and you trust in Jesus Christ, and that you know that you are a sinner. You are already heirs with, with the kingdom. You are already sitting in high places. You, like the Ephesians says, you are already a priest and a king and all of that. You are already an overcomer as First John in the book of First John says. So for the people who say that you have to overcome, no, 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 no. You, a, a born again Christian is an overcomer already. Okay. And in the first, the book of first John says that we already know that we have eternal life. So if you don't know that you've already been, have eternal life and you are a true born again Christian today, you need to be set free. You are set free child of God. Your sins have been washed clean. Past, present and future sins are washed clean. That doesn't mean to go out and sin no more. No born again Christian is going to think that kind of way. No born, no true born again Christian is going to say, oh, I'm set free. I'm going to go out and sin. That's some, that is the most, uh, listen, there's, it's a cancer going on. The Lord's coming back. I'm so aggravated. The Lord is coming back guys. And there's so many crept in unawares men that are false apostles all over the place trying to pervert the gospel and, and, and use it for their own destruction. They will get it. They're going to get the wrath of God. 